For practices, self-check 4.25 print triangle type preconditions. We are asked to consider a method print triangle type that accepts three integer arguments representing the lengths of the sides of a triangle and prints the type of triangle that these sides form. So we have three types, which are equilateral, isosceles, and scalene. An equilateral triangle has three sides of the same length. An isosceles triangle has two sides of the same length. And a scalene si triangle has three sides of different length. However, certain integer values or combinations of values would be illegal and could not represent the sides of an actual triangle. We are asked, what are these values? In other words, how would we describe the preconditions of the print triangle type method? Then we are also given some of these answers, A, B, C, D, E, and F. And we are asked, which of the following are preconditions that are appropriate for this method? check all that apply. First, we have A. No side's length may exceed the sum of any other two side lengths. Now, if we recall the rules of triangles, so if we have a triangle that looks like this, and it says no side lengths may exceed the sum of two other side lengths, even though we have this huge side length right here, it cannot exceed the length of this side length and this side length added together. That's just a rule of triangles. So we are going to check B. This needs to be a precondition that no one side length may exceed the sum of two side lengths. In other words, the two side lengths must be greater than one of the side lengths. And this is going to be the case if it is these two lengths being compared or if it is these two lengths being compared to this one right here. For part B, we have all sides must have the same length. This does not need to be a precondition because an equilateral triangle has all sides of the same length, so we're gonna leave this unchecked. For C, we have the sums of the side lengths must be an even number. This is not true because if we look at a XY graph, which is how triangles are made, we have the x direction, which is positive. So if we're given a positive number, we will go from here to here to make our triangle like this. And then if we are given a negative number, well, instead of going this way in our y direction, we're gonna go down. So the negative or positive side only indicates direction. And then when we connect this, this is how our triangle is going to look. So we can have a negative side length. For C, we have the sums of the side lengths must be an even number. This does not have to be true because, I mean, we've just proven that the side lengths can be a negative number. Like, if we do this in red, if both of our side lengths are negative, like this, then if we add both of these two by our first rule that must exist, it can be a negative number. For D, we have the three side lengths must be positive integers. They do have to be positive integers. Even or negative does not matter, but they do have to be a positive integer. They do have to be a real number. So we are going to check that. For E, no side's length can be greater than 180. That's just silly because we can make a triangle as big or small as we want. For F, we have no two side lengths can be the same. This for the same reason as B is incorrect. We do not need to check it because for a isosceles triangle, they are the same length. So this is the condition for this. If we submit this, we can see that we've passed one on one test, meaning that we have solved the answer for this problem. That for our preconditions, we know that no side lengths may exceed the sum of two other side lengths, and the three side lengths must be positive integers.